want to thank everyone uh, for being here. Uh, your, you know, all of all of you, your dedication to, and your consistent coverage of the New York Liberty and the WNBA is really, really good. Uh oh, I think I think Claire, we may have we may have lost you here for a second. No worries, Claire. We can come back to you as it's difficult to hear you right now. Um, but we're going to turn it over to Jonathan Cole. All right, thanks, Alicia. Um, first off, hello to everybody. I, I hope that uh, in the future we can all be together again. But obviously, with what's going on, it has to be via Zoom yet again. Um, so, real exciting day for us uh, and, and for the Liberty and for the fans. Um, first and foremost, I really just wanna welcome Sandy and, and Sandy's family to the New York Liberty family. Um, I would also like to thank Clara, uh, Joe and Ollie for um, their connection and a uh, real sense of care uh, during this entire process. Um, you know, we were, we were all very aligned on what we were looking okay, for I'm, in the I'm next- back. Oh, Okay, yep. Okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah, I just, you know, and I, I want to get it to Jonathan as quickly as possible. But, you know, what I just wanted to let you let everybody know is that we did have a very uh, thorough search. Of, uh -oh. You know, a couple of months that he spent identifying the right candidates. Uh, but in the end, we ended up, Joe and I ended up uh, speaking in person to three candidates, some of them more than once. And uh, we're really thrilled that Sandy is joining our team. And as we all know, she brings a wealth of experience. And she's also a known uh, culture setter. And um, what we're excited about is that she's not only going to be able to elevate our existing stars, but she's also a really good developer of young talent. And as, as we all know, we have a really strong set of stars, but also a core, a young core that we're developing. Uh, so, um, I'm really excited to welcome her. I'd like to hand it up to Jonathan. And my real message to you guys is that we continue to invest. We continue to invest not only in the New York Liberty, but in the WNBA uh, as a whole. Uh, we're really uh, excited about the uptick in numbers and viewership that we've seen all last year. And we expect that momentum to continue. And we're definitely going to be part of leading that charge. So uh, Jonathan, take it away. And Sandy, welcome to the New York Liberty. Thanks. Thanks, Claire. And, and I'll pick up kind of where I left off in the interim there, which was was really just thinking ownership. Um, Clara just said it in terms of investing and, and not only do they invest with the resources, but really with their level of care. And I think that in, in a sports organization, especially a WNBA team, when when the belief is that strong at the top, it only means good things in the future. And so during this process, uh, ownership and management were completely aligned on, on the qualities and characteristics we were looking for in the next leader of this team and the ne next leader of this franchise. And number one on that list was experience, experience in the coaching seat, uh, the head coaching seat. Um, we also wanted somebody that has a real high care factor for coaching this Liberty team and being within this organization. Um, and then also just strong levels of integrity and values. And so as we went through the process and we continued to have conversations with Sandy, it just became abundantly clear that she's the right choice for this team. And so um, with that, I, I could not, truly could not be more excited uh, to congratulate Sandy Brondello on being the new head coach of the New York Liberty. And uh, I will turn it over to you, Sandy. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. Um, and yeah, it's great to see so many people on the Zoom and hopefully we do get back in person uh, next season. But look, it was, uh, you know, I had a sleepless night last night. I mean, just with excitement, to be quite honest. Um, you know, um, you know, this is a special day for me and, and, and also for my family to be named the, the new head coach of the, the New York Liberty. It's an organisation um, that I've admired from afar for, for so many years. I've been in this league for 22 of the 25 years as a player and a coach. And I've been particularly impressed, obviously, 
uh, with the new ownership. And, and I'd really, really want to just uh, express my gratitude to Joe and Clara and Ollie and Jonathan for, you know, the faith that they've shown in me to lead this team forward and, um, you know, for the next few years and, and hopefully that we can have sustainable success. You know, our goal is to win a championship. I think that would be great for the Liberty organisation, of course, but also for the WNBA. Um, you know, I think Jonathan's put a really strong foundation uh, the team that he's put together over these last few years. So I'm excited to work with him and continue to add players that will fit with the core players that we have. And, um, you know, I can't wait to, you know, with, for free agency to start. I think there's opportunities for, you know, a lot of growth individually and collectively in this team. And i um, super excited to be able to have that opportunity to lead them forward. Uh, but just going back to Joe and Clara, I mean, I just loved our conversation that we have. I think we're really aligned in our vision and I love that, obviously, their investment, their passion, uh, you know, passionate about the league and they care. They care for the whole organisation. And, and so that, uh, you know, makes me really happy. And, and I have a really good working relationship with Jonathan. So I look forward to that. I've met some other star. Um, you know, I can't wait. You know, it's uh, I spent some time in Brooklyn when we played there last year and I really love the area, obviously, the facility. So, yeah, excited to, to get going and. Uh, excited to work with the, the talented roster that we have in place um, and to put my style of play onto to the game and, and, you know, have that success. And it really does, you know, Clara spoke about it. It starts with, you know, just building a winning culture. And I think they're on the right track here. Uh, this is a lot. This is a new team really last year. So many new players, really good players, had a few injuries. But I think if, you know, you get them healthy, they have more time to, together, build that cohesive unit add a few uh, players that we know that can help us be better, uh, I think it will put us in a great position to, to win more games than, than, than we're going to lose. And, uh, you know, I think people that have known me, I've been in the league for a long time as coach. I mean, eight years in Phoenix, you know, um, you may not have thought it, but I am a defensive coach first. And I think that's an area that will be the focus from day one for this Liberty team. You know, we have to be a better defensive team if we want to win championships. That's what it takes. And it's not, it's not, it's a five player defense. You know, everyone's engaged and buying in and playing tough and playing together and building that trust. That's critical. Offensively, I think, you know, we can score more points. We can run more. You know, I want to have a selfless basketball team. It's, it's about playing together and, and, you know, it's good to great. Yeah, we've got our superstars and, you know, obviously they're always going to take the most shots there, but you want to play a style of basketball, it's ball player movement and making sure we're getting great possessions. But, you know, I look forward to, we, like I said, I've talked about the talented roster. It's just putting those players in positions where they can have great success. So, you yeah, excited about the challenge ahead and I can't wait to, to meet a lot of you that obviously media that are, are in New York and uh, can't wait to... Uh, you know, get there and, 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 you know, joining just such a great organization. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, we are going to go ahead and open up for our Q and A. Um, just a reminder to please raise your hands if you haven't already. Uh, reminder also to unmute yourselves. And as this is Sandy's first New York uh, media availability, please uh, let us know which publication you're with. We'll start with Michelle Vogel. Yeah. Uh, um, Sandy, <clears throat> Michelle Vopel, ESPN.com, congratulations to you. If I could just ask you and Jonathan to sort of talk about some of the things you've talked about, um, just in terms of, like you said, the liberty finding sort of an identity under you and, and how kind of fun is this for you, Sandy, to have a, you know, a new start after all you've accomplished um, in a new place? Oh, okay, Jonathan, I'll, I'll take off first there. But look, hi, Michelle. Um, look, I'm super excited. Um, you know, it's, you know, one door closes, another one open, and I didn't, you know, know what the future was whole, was going to happen for me, but, um, you know, very, very thankful and grateful for the trust that, you know, Joe, Clara, and Ollie, and Jonathan have, have given me, and it's exciting. It's a new team. It's a very talented team. I mean, you know, Sabrina, Benajia, you know, Tasha, Semi, and, you know, the list goes on, and, and Jonathan's put together some really, you know, good, yeah, core cool group together, and I'm excited to work with them and to see, you know, how much, you know, further I, I know we will be a better team in 2022 and it'll take a lot of hard work and commitment. Um, but I think these players are ready for that. I think having good health will help and the new players are, 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 will have more cohesiveness. But, you know, I like to see myself as a servant leader. I want to put them, put an environment in place where they can continue to grow individually and collectively and, and being a former player, you know, relationships are important. You know, I think that's how continue to help them to be the best 
not just uh, players, but also people and uh, excited about the opportunity and challenge, challenge ahead. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll second that. I think something that kind of gets lost here is that, as Sandy just mentioned, she is a former player. And so she can relate to these players in ways that other people can. I think that's really important. I also think that um, I'm really excited for her to come into a new situation. She had such continuity over there for so long that now Sandy gets to come in fresh and implement her culture, her identity from day one. And so that's, that's some of what we've talked about and what we're excited about for uh, 2022. Thank you. Doug Feinberg. Hey, Sandy, welcome to New York. Thanks, Doug. Um, I'm curious. I mean, you obviously saw New York in their, their last game of the season last year and a couple of games before that. What what impressed you about that roster that they had? I mean, a lot of the players were the same, obviously, and some new ones. But what impressed you about them? And also, just you, obviously, when you got to Phoenix, had a really good situation with Diana and Brittany and a few others. Like, you kind of get your chance to put your own stamp on something now. You talked about defense, but what about offensively? What are your thoughts on what you're going to try to do offensively with this group? Well, I think we can score more points, to be quite honest. Um, you know, and hopefully we can get out and run a little bit quicker. Um, you know, get some easy baskets in, in, in transition. But I look, I think having health, I think you saw, and I, and I mentioned that in my interviews as well too, the last two games, I mean, the New York, the Liberty, I mean, they were tough. I mean, they, they had to beat Washington to make the playoffs. And then, you know, we only, we escaped with the victory in that first round playoff. So you saw the, the ability that they had and, you know, getting all the players in the right position. So, look, I think the future is really bright. Um, these players are going to get better and better. They're going to get used to playing with each other. And I think, you know, I think I've done a pretty good job over with my experience from New York, putting the best players in positions where they can have great success. But, I, you know, at the same time, I want them to enjoy the journey. I mean, that's important. You know, I mean, we do this. Yes, we get paid. But, you know, for as many years I've been involved, I mean, this is this is our passion. And I'm starting to connect to some of the players now and just, you know, I want to, you know, just hit the ground running and so excited about that. And it, it's nice to have a fresh start because as Jonathan said, you can come in, it's, it's totally new players. I've, the only uh, players I've coached from the roster from last year is Sammy and, and Beck Allen. I've spoken to some trying to recruit them in the past. So it's exciting to start this new adventure with a new team and um, new ownership. So, um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you too, Doug. Thanks, Sandy. Howard McDowell. Sandy, congratulations and welcome. Good to have you in market. Uh, Jonathan Clara, thank you as well for taking the time. Uh, my question actually <clears throat> is for you, Jonathan. Um, this is obviously the first chance we're having to talk uh, since uh, Walt Hopkins was let go. Um, wondering, you know, just given the progress you made last year, whether this decision was made based on uh, on court or uh, if there were off the court elements and given your experience with him, would you hesitate to recommend Walt for a future head coaching job? Yeah. Thanks Howard. Yeah, no problem. Um, well, I do want all this to be about Sandy day. Happy to happy to touch base on it. I think for us um, every season after every year, we, we thoroughly evaluate the staff. It's what we do. Um, and it's what we did last year after 2020. It's what we did after 2021 season. And I think it was really important for us to look at the season as a whole. And when you look at it in a bookend format, we got off to a really great start. And then, hey, we beat Washington and we, we were really competitive, as we just talked about, against Phoenix in a single elim elimination playoff game. And that all feels great. Um, but what happened in between? And I think we were something like two and, two and nine in our last 11. I think there was an eight game losing streak. Um, and so when we evaluated everything and we saw how these pieces were, were fitting together, we saw that we were the sixth seed without, largely without Natasha uh, at the break. Um, what do we need going forward? And for us, it was truly experience. It's somebody that's proven. It's somebody that's battle tested because no longer are we in a situation where the eighth seed is our goal. We're looking for sustained playoff success. And so we have somebody now at the helm that is coached close to, I think, 300 some odd regular season games. We've got 40 plus playoff games. We've got advanced level preparation and single eliminations. Obviously, those are gone now, but it just shows to the coaching acumen. And so for us, um, it was how do we raise our ceiling? And a change at the head coaching position was was where we netted out there. And I think having come here today, um, I couldn't be more excited that Sandy is the new leader of this team because I have immense belief that she's going to take us where we want to go.
And just the other part of that, you know, given your experience with Walt, would you hesitate to recommend him for a future head coaching job? You know, I think I, I don't want to speak for Walt. I, I, I don't know what Walt would like to do in the future. Um, and so I don't want to put words in his mouth uh, on that. But I will say um, that, you know, 2020, um, we had a lot of young players, seven young players, seven rookies. Um, and then coming into this season, I think their games have grown. I, I do think Walt did a great job developing uh, that talent pool. Thank you all. Jackie Powell. Hello, everyone. Thank you all uh, for being here. And uh, Sandy, welcome to New York. You you said, oh, Jackie Powell from New York. Now you're coming to New York. Um, so uh, welcome. And uh, so for you, you know, I'm curious as to what this new dynamic, you know, you're going to have with, with Jonathan is going to be like, because I know that in Phoenix with Jim Pittman, he had a bunch of other responsibilities in addition to the Mercury. But with Jonathan, you have someone who is working, you know, it's Liberty all season long. So I'm just curious about how that collaboration, you know, is going to work. Oh, it's going to work perfectly. Like, and trust me on that. I've known Jonathan for quite a long time. Um, you know, obviously he was he's been in the league when I was a pl- uh, in Phoenix when I was a player. Uh, he was, you know, obviously in the, the WNBA office and now now with New York. So I've known him for a very long time. He, um, you know, uh, uh, personally to you know, other people that know him and look, just our relationship that we've had with the start of this process, our communication that we've had, it was um, it was easy. You know what I mean? I think, and I have, I've always said that when. And I've said that taking a new opportunity, a new head coach job, you want to make sure you have a great working relationship with that person that is forming the team with you. And I have that already with Jonathan. I think we clicked from um, day one. I think we were very aligned in what we thought this team's um, potential could be and what we needed to do to get there. And, like, he's the GM and he's totally invested, and that's great. Um, you know, I, I can annoy him every day, any day, at any time of the day. And, and, and you know, that's great. And, and that's his job. And he's, I think he's done a great job of putting the players that have in place now and excited to see what we can do in free agency together. Wonderful. And, and for, for Jonathan, you know, I'm curious as to how the brand of Liberty basketball is going to evolve, you know, with, with mm-hmm. Sandy at the helm. I mean, the Liberty have become known to you know, run this five out system, a system that's reliant upon spreading the floor. How does that change um, with Sandy? Yeah, I think happy to answer it to the extent that I can. I, I also think that's, that's largely a Sandy question, but Sandy, the big thing about her is she's very adaptable and she's had, you know, generational centers uh, for in Phoenix and Australia, but then also went through a situation where she didn't and, and adapted her system to play a different style. And so Sandy wants to win basketball games. We all want to win basketball games. The fans want to win basketball games. So we're going to play the way that that fits our team and our personnel the best. Um, And I have no doubt that Sandy is going to instill that from day one. Um, In looking at last year's statistics, I mean, we've got a lot of areas to improve. And so while we were competitive and we were in basketball games, not winning those during a certain stretch, um, we can get even better with the roster as is, not to mention what Sandy brought up regarding free agent, possible free agent acquisitions. So, um, you know, I look forward to a gritty basketball team that wants to play for New York and New York and for each other. Great. Thank you. Sarah Valenzuela. Hey all, uh, Sarah Valenzuela with the New York Daily News. Congratulations, Sandy, and welcome to New York. Um, this question is for uh, really anyone who wants to answer, maybe all of you guys. Um, when uh, you guys were going through the process of uh, vetting candidates, um, did you guys ever speak to like in person, um, maybe not in person, but did you ever speak to uh, say Beck or Sammy and say like, hey, you know, thinking of bringing Sandy on, like, what are your thoughts? <laughs> Yeah, I, I can answer that. I don't want to get too deep into the process, but I would say that we are very thorough in our research. Well, sure. <laughs> yep. um, I'll give a very quick follow-up then. Um, when you guys were uh, laying out that vision for what you want the future of Liberty Basketball to look like, you 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 specifically said, or I'm sorry, Clara specifically said, or both of you said championships. Um, what's the timeline, if you can give one, for what you guys want the next championship to be? 
Yeah, I can jump in and Sandy, if, if you want to follow up, I think Sandy said it best with a, a couple comments ago, which is we have to enjoy this journey. We have to build this the right way. If we build this with, hey, it's the trophy at the end of the season or else, that's not going to materialize. So it's from day one. We've got a lot of work to do. We've got work to do on the roster. We've got training camp. We've got our practice sessions. And so we we are hitting the ground running right now to get to that goal. But we can't just be focused on that. We have to be focused on every single day. Um, that's how we've been approaching it and how we'll continue to do that. But I'll, I'll turn it over to Sandy for, for the follow-up as well. Yeah, no, look, I agree with Jonathan there. I mean, obviously the ultimate goal is always to win a championship. But, but for me as a coach, I'm, I'm more about the process. You know, if we, we focus on the process, the result will come. So it's more just getting ready, getting the right people in place, uh, making sure that we, you know, come hard, we're committed, we trust each other and we build that culture that we need to be uh, a really good team and sustain that success, not for one year, but for multiple years. And, you know, that's a challenge ahead. And, and you know, I think... Uh, uh, the team is in the right direction. And now it's, you know, just continuing to get better and better. Thank you. Holly Rowe. Hello, Sandy. I just wanted to ask you what attracted you to the New York Liberty organization. I've just been so impressed with Joe Sai and kind of the organization he's building behind the scenes with Kia and all of the great people there. What, what did you do to vet them and how did you uh, become attracted to that group? Well, I think it was, you know, I think, you know, players, everyone talks uh, about the ownership um, around the league. And I just knew it was just, they're totally invested. They're very engaged. They're passionate about the growth of not just New York Liberty, but about the, the WNBA. And, you know, it's been, I've had a, had an enjoyable eight years here in, in Phoenix and, and I'm going to, you know, I think could possibly be the best organization in the WNBA. So I think that was for me, it was more like, oh, yeah, that would be a great job, a great situation with a great roster and ownership. I, I want to be a part of that. Now, you know, I'm just grateful that it all, it all worked out, Holly. So, um, you know, and I think it's, you know, it's New York and, and I think the future definitely looks bright. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, gra I'm just happy I get the opportunity to lead this with Jonathan. Thank you. Jeff Magliocetti. Thank you. Good afternoon, all of you. Sandy, welcome to New York. Jeff Magliacetti with Empire Sports Media, Windsider, and Nets Republic. Great to have you aboard. So last year was such an interesting year for you. You accomplished so much. You coached in an Olympics. You coached in a WA, WNBA Finals. So what's the one lesson you're going to take from the 2021 season, your last in Phoenix? What's the one lesson you're going to take from that and apply it to this new step of your coaching journey? Well, that is, that is a really great question. Um, <laughs> You know, I suppose experience, we had some highs and lows during out the season um, and you'll get to know me. Look, I'm a, I'm a glass half full. I always say, like, what can we do today to be better? Um, you know, you, you've got to learn from the losses and, and continue to grow from them, but staying together. So I think my experience from the whole journey of 2021 and um, that's including handling COVID, living, being in a bubble and all those kind of things and, you know, handing with, handling different situations that come up in, in every season, basically. So I think my experience is, is going to be really helpful heading into to the new season. Thank you. Appreciate that. And Jonathan, I have one for you. Uh, what sort of message in your own words, what does sending, what does hiring an accomplished champion, both on and off the court in Sandy Brondello send to the rest of the association? Yeah, I think, I think it's just that we're ready to take that next step. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for the past couple of years, it's been, how do we get to the playoffs for the first time since I think 2017, right? Well, we haven't had a winning record since then. And so how do we take that next step? How do we establish continuity? Um, how do we establish an identity that, that will carry on into what we hope, hope will ultimately be a championship um, at the end of the day? So for us, that's the message is that we're ready to, to raise our ceiling and, and step forward. Appreciate your time and insight, all of you. Thank you for being here. Uh, welcome to New York, Sandy. Thank you. Erica Ayala. Erica, we're unable to hear you. All right, we'll go to Miles Ehrlich. Erica will come. Oh. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh. Okay. There you are. Thanks. Sorry about that. Uh, I was just saying, Feliz Año Nuevo, everyone. Happy New Year uh, to Coach Brandello. Um, you 
you know, I, I actually want to remix what Jackie was asking you, uh, Jonathan and ask it to you. Um, you know, you've talked about defense. Uh, you've talked about, uh, you know, being a coach that, that really wants to build uh, relationships and, and uh, you know, care for and love up on your players. Uh, so what will that look like or what will you hope that it looks like um, when it comes to hitting the court with this New York Liberty team? And Jonathan, for you, I'm curious, uh, are we still using hybrid uh, rebuild or how would you classify this next era of New York Liberty basketball with Sandy Brondello? Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. I have to remember all that question there too, but look, um, you know, for me, it, it's more like, you know, you have to invest in the players. You got to build those relationships up. And I think, you know, my plan, I think Jonathan said it before is I'm very adaptable to the players that we have. I'm not a coach that comes in and says, we're going to play like this, but you don't have the players to be able to play like that. Um, so I'll learn a lot in the beginning here, but like defensively that that's hard work. That's commitment. That's trust. And that's where culture piece comes in. Uh, these are really, you know, really good players, really good people. And it's just, you know, finding that cohesiveness and being able to handle the adversity that we'll face because we will face adversity. Every team does. And the difference between a good and a great team is how quickly they come out, how quickly can they learn and stay together. So that's the stuff that I'll be preaching, you know, offensively. I think there's a lot of great things, you know, there's a, a, a way to play this, you know, it, there'll be, a, we've got playmaking, we've got shooting, um, we've got versatility, obviously in the roster. I think we can use our speed a little bit more to our advantage to get those easy baskets too. So, you know, I think it's something once we complete the team, you know, Jonathan, with free agency and get ready, leading into the, the training camp, you know, we'll have that system in place, but at the same time, you have to be able to adapt you know, if something's not working, I don't make, you know, I don't hit my head against the wall like, no, it's going to work. No, it's going to. Let's tweak it a little bit so that we can have the success that we need on the court. Um, you know, and that's that, That's just who I am. You know, I'm a former player. You know, if it doesn't work, don't kill it. And let's just go to the next. Uh, but look, putting players, I want players to be who they are within the system. You know, I'm not putting anyone in a box. You can't do this. No, you, you all basketball players but making sure that we're playing together at a high level. And, and if we can do that well, I think we can have, um, you know, great success. Yeah. And I'll, I'll come on the back of that, Erica. I know you, you hate the uh, hybrid rebuild status. So if you're, if you're asking to retire it, I think you can um, obviously, like Sandy said, we're, we're looking to be, uh, be aggressive in free agency, but at the same time it takes two to tango. And so we'll see where we net out. One thing I want to emphasize though, is that we still have a young roster. We've got, uh, young contributing players that we still need to develop. So I don't necessarily think it's a rebuild, but we are still in a development mindset while trying to win games. Miles Ehrlich. Hi, Miles Ehrlich with Nets Republic, Windsider and Queen Ballers Club. Sandy, first of all, welcome to New York. Uh, sorry if this is a bit of a retread, but when you look at the Liberty roster that you've inherited from Walt Hopkins and the staff, what is one quality you're most excited about working with? And what is one challenge you anticipate needing to overcome in shaping the remainder of its composition? Um, look, I think, you know, you look at all the best teams or the ones that have won championships and, and you know, have won one, it's more like um, you, you have to have really good players, but then you have to have that supporting role cast behind it. And, you know, and it's more about, you know, clarification on their roles, but knowing everyone is important. And that's my job as a coach to make sure that everyone who's on that team, uh, whether regardless of how many minutes they play, they're important. So I think I, like I think I'm, I'm inheriting a really good team, you know, and, and Jonathan said they're young, they're going to still grow um, and they have to get healthy. And, uh, you know, and so that's what makes it exciting. And I think the sky's the limit to, to where we can go. Um, but look, I think the biggest thing, I think we all know, they just need to be, have more of identity on defense. You know, they showed it at times, but that's the biggest area I think, um, you know, that they can get better at. And I think I can help with that. And, and I think we have players, you know, who we can play in different ways. We don't have to play one way. We can, you know, do to the scouting, but put them in positions that we can have success, not trying to make players do something that they're not very good at. Um, and I think that's that's a part of the chess and, and hopefully I do a great job of that. Thank you. And I've got one for you too, Jonathan. And I don't know if Clara is here, but I've got one for her as well. Um, last year around this time, you said, quote, we're going to be really aggressive and see how it shakes up in regards to free agency. But I don't think tonight is the only night we're going to be in the news. 
So while the, while the cap flexibility is not quite where it was last offseason, should fans expect a splash in the coming weeks that will further raise the talent level of the team? Yeah, I think um, we're always looking to improve whenever there is and, and you have your targets. Um, I think with where we're positioned in terms of the cap, we can create a lot of room if we want to. If, if, if there is a player out there we believe can come in, um, we can create some cap room to make that happen. Um, but look, we will always look to improve the roster. Um, and so we think that there might be some opportunities, but we won't know until the negotiation period uh, gets underway mid-month. And so we're excited to get to work, uh, to go out recruiting and see, see what we end up with uh, come February. Thanks so much. Danny Thompson. Andy, Danny Thompson with the three-point conversion. Congratulations on being in New York. And it's going to be, it's, I'm going to miss you covering in Phoenix. But as you look into the new roster in New York, do you see any similarities to what you've been coaching in Phoenix when you look at this roster up and down of what is, who's on the roster at the current moment? Uh, some, I mean, there's no Brittany Griner here, you know, that, that dominant big post player. But look, you know, I think they still have really talented, I mean, Benajah Laney, her development over the last few years has been, you know, quite inspiring, to be quite honest. And, you know, Sabrina, and, and she's, you know, getting healthy and we know that what she's capable of, this great playmaker. You know, Natasha Howard, you know, she was injured a lot last year. That hurt the Liberty. You know, if we can get her healthy, we know what she's capable of too. So, you know, obviously that's your core group. you got Sammy Whitcomb. She's one of the best shooters in the WNBA. So I think you're adding, you know, we've got this, you know, Michaela, uh, you know, DD, you got the defensive look as well too and that athleticism. So, you know, there's, you know, um, other players I haven't spoken about, but we talk, it's a young group. So it's more about how it all works together and finding that great chemistry. Um, but, yeah, so there's similarities. I mean, it, it doesn't matter what kind of players you have. It's more about, you know, they're going to buy in and they're going to play together. I mean, it's all about – it's teamwork. This is a team sport. It's not – you know, individuals are not going to win it. So I think we've got the right talent there. We're heading in the right direction. And hopefully we can – you know, if we can improve our roster, we will. I mean, that's the goal. We want to keep getting better. And um, But, you know, I do like the roster that we have. And one quick one for Jonathan. I remember last year at Media Day you were saying that the idea is to – Phil Barkley's on a nightly basis with nothing but Liberty fans and knowing that you have this roster and now you're bringing in Sandy with the experience she's had and championship she's won. Do you feel like this, this is going to be where you want it to be, where you have a packed house and people want to come to see this team? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, assuming that the regulations are where we need them to be, right. I, I, I felt that put a, a damper on the, the start last year, but for us, it's a real exciting product. This is a roster that gets up and down. As Sandy said, we want to increase the pace of play. Um, we think we can hunt more buckets. And so I think this is going to be a brand of basketball that fans can really get behind. And I think, you know, if you've come to Barclays Center, there's no place like it in the WNBA for, for game action. And so it's a wonderful place to be in. And I hope to see everybody out there this summer. Thank you both. Thank you once again, Sandy. Congratulations. Thank you. Holly Rowe. I just wanted to follow up on one quick thing. Um, how does your impact with guards, uh, do you think, gives you some real court cred with your new guards that you're coming into? Because you were a terrific player yourself, but then what you've done to improve Skylar Diggins and her free agency and, and, and what you've been able to do. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, I was a guard. So, you know, I, I played for at a high level for a long, long time. And, 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 and that's about the part of the sharing. You know, my experiences will help them uh, because there's times, there's different situations that they're going to go through. How do they handle it? Well, guess what? I've, I've probably been through it. And, and I think that firsthand experience certainly helps them. But, you know, for me, it's more about putting, you know, having uh, the staff around us that we can continue to develop those players and, and spending the time individually on court uh, video, but also just one-on-one -on -one conversation as well too. I think that's a part of the growth and, you know, trust, respect goes both ways. And that's what I want to build up. And I, I think that's what I did in obviously Phoenix. And you saw what Skylar was able to do. And uh, I mean, yeah, a lot of credit to her because she worked so hard, but she wanted to get better. And I think these players that, um, you know, obviously in the New York Liberty want to get better. So that makes my job easier and the coaches that I'll be bringing in. Eric Wilson. Uh, Sandy, congratulations on the new gig in New York. And uh, Eric Wilson, Inscriber Magazine and Sideline Sports, 
you know, last time I saw you, you were leaving Wintrust Arena, unfortunately not the outcome you were looking for. And now you have this fresh start here in New York. Can you just speak to, you know, this new opportunity and also to Jonathan, what were, if you could just take one or two determining factors that ultimately made you decide to offer this position to Sandy? Yeah, hi, Eric. Yeah, thank you. Look, I think the first thing once, you know, obviously things didn't work out in Phoenix I mean, and, and, and New York was available, it was more like, oh, boy. I mean, that's if you want to say what's kind of a dream job is, I mean, that's it. You know, and, and of course, I was putting my hand up. I just thought that would be an ideal situation for me to take over a team that's very talented and close to being, you know, really successful. Um, so, you know, I was just excited to, to interview, to be quite honest, and, and, and just thankful and grateful. Like I said, it's wonderful ownership. I really love the, how invested they are in the team. And, and like I said, the relationship that I have with Jonathan, you know, I feel it feels like I've been there for a long time already, even though this is my announcement today. I just feel really comfortable and, and the staff that I've spoken to behind the scenes and um, just a really high class organisation. So just really happy to be a part of it and, and hopefully we can do great things together. Yep. And, and on my side, I honestly don't think enough gets spoken about in terms of Sandy's coaching job last year with Phoenix. That it was pretty amazing when you look at where they started, where they finished, and all the turmoil in between. I mean, to, to lose a Kia nurse, uh, a Sophie Cunningham, and, and really key and critical games at a position of need, and for them to stick together and finish the season the way they did and then go into the playoffs the way they did and find that level of, of success, that doesn't happen without a tremendous leader at the top. It just doesn't. And so um, that was something that really stood out. And then obviously when you look at her career as a whole, um, as a head coach, um, that level of experience, um, we believe, is just exactly what our players need currently. Thank you, and best of luck. Thanks. Maria Marino. Hello, Maria Marino from SNY TV in New York. Sandy, so nice to see you. Welcome to New York. Um, I think this question might be more for Jonathan. Uh, you've talked about wanting to be aggressive in free agency, and of course you have your targets um, can you give us any insight into what you're looking for in free agency, whether it be a name, a position, uh, or just a quality that helps you fill a need? Yeah, you're, you're going to hate me. I, I know you want the names. I know what you want. I wish I could <laughs> give them to you. Um, but, but right now, look, I mean, honestly, it's not, it's not to be cliche. We just want to get better. And so this is a really good class where there are players that um, we think we can go after and upgrade uh, where we need to and, and just put together a really cohesive unit so that uh, there's actual depth to our team. And we want to make sure that we're, we're never too top heavy and that we've got quality WNBA personnel throughout. Um, and so we'll, we'll, we'll see how it shakes out. And, and hopefully on February 1, we can chat again and we can go over those names. I don't hate you. Definitely. We'll chat <laughs> again. Thanks. <laughs> Alex Simon. Hi, Alex Simon from The Next. Sandy, great to talk to you again. Uh, I was just curious and kind of going from seven and nine at the halfway point of the season, and, and you were very harsh to your team after that Minnesota loss to, you know, five minutes away from forcing a game five. With Jonathan especially kind of talking up the coaching job you did last year, were you surprised to not stay in Phoenix and have your contract renewed? Look, you know, I don't, I suppose I'm going to do what Jonathan did. I don't really want to look at the past now. I'm really focused on the future. But look, I had eight great years in Phoenix. I had really great memories. I got a lot of great friends. Um, I have nothing to say about that organization. But, you know, if there needs to be a change, I totally get that. This is, a, this is the business side of the game. But, you know, for me, um, you know, I, I just looked forward and, and this opportunity came up and, and just really thankful and, and so excited. And I, I think this is a great fit for me. You know, a great fit for me with this young team, and it's a fresh start, and so I'm excited about that, Alex. And, and you brought up the staffing a little bit, and I do want to generally ask you about the staffing as well, but I did notice in your um, quote in the press release that you mentioned your family would be moving to New York City, and since you happen to have a spouse who is a coach in the WNBA, kind of what is your general staffing, and I guess would your husband be somebody that you'd consider bringing aboard? Yeah, look, uh, Jonathan and I haven't gotten into, you know, our staffing at the moment, but we'll, we'll start to work on that. But look, my family, 
obviously you know they're they're excited they're not we're not they're not moving to new york i mean well it'll be a, a summer thing for now with the kids in school but uh you never know what the future holds and um but we're just you know they're excited they love the WNBA. they love being around it it's been a great experience for all of us so um you know after you know next week we'll probably get locked in and putting the staff together and, and we'll see hope to see you around phoenix still thank you thanks gg spear Hi, everybody, and congrats, Coach. Nice to see you in New York. Um, Gigi Spear from WFUV Radio. And I wanted to ask you about team chemistry, team building, and all that. Um, obviously, as a former player, you know how important that is, and you've talked about it a lot today. Um, so, yeah, I want to know if you have any preliminary ideas to build that chemistry and trust on and off the court, especially with leaders and vets like Sammy and Natasha. Yeah, well, it certainly helps when you have, you know, obviously good, good people. And I think this is a team that really has good people and they want to win and um, you got the leaders there. But for me, uh, you know, I think the start, you know, before you can start talking about strategy, you need culture. So you need a strong winning culture. And, you know, I've had a lot of experience with that, just being a player. And I've been on teams when it hadn't worked, but I know what when it works, how, how good it can be. And it certainly does help the performance on the court. So yeah, that's important for me. They need to know each other. You know, they need to know me. We are a family now. Um, and that's why, you know, it's that's a part of the journey now, getting to know each other. It doesn't mean that won't be difficult times and, you know, they're going to, they have to be coached. And But look, I'm trying to help them to be the best players that they can be because in the end, individually, that will help us collectively as a team and give us much success. So, you know, we'll, we'll have a lot of team buildings in the beginning and, and it's really just, you know, and it's a, it's a team building where they're taking ownership of our, our values. It's not me. I'm not a dictator coach. I think that's how the best teams that I've been on is where the players decide, okay, what kind of team we want to be. You know, what are our values? What are our behaviours? That's important because then that's how you get the buy-in and that's how you can hold, you know, we, everyone can stay on track um, with the, you know, the goal, what our goal is, um, you know, at the end of the season. Awesome. Thank you so much and good luck. Thank you. Next up, Benajia Laney. Hi. <laughs> Go easy on me. <laughs> uh oh, she there? Hey B, are you muted? She's texting me over here though. <laughs> <laughs> we may need to come back to you after you fix your. <laughs> All right, we're gonna let's try Benaja again. Benaja? No. All right, we're gonna come back around. Uh, Erica Ayala. Thank you so much. Uh, Coach, I wanted to come back to you one more time. And um, I, I, I hear you saying a few different things. I just would like to ask a different way. When it comes to um, building a team that you say you really want the players to establish, uh, what are some of the things as a coach, as a head coach, and then along with your coaching staff that uh, kind of contribute to giving players the autonomy to feel out the season and build a team that they are proud of and can take ownership of? Well, I think, it, I think that's what makes a great team. It's more like everybody, the investment comes from everybody, the engagement. It's like you're signing a contract at the start of the year, aren't you, with the players? You know what I mean? Um, it's more like, what's your personal brand? Them deciding in front of the group, what's their personal brand going to be? You know, what kind of player do I want to be? Um, and that's, you know, that's their own accountability. Um, but look, as I've done it many times with the coaches that uh, are the teams that I've coached over the years, and I just think it, 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 it enables you to go back to it. Because if you go away from it, um, you know, you can go back to a, hey, you know, we need to make sure we're not being a great defensive team. We're not the, you know, physically fit. We have to have respect for each other. You know, there's little things, but the values have to come up. What do the players, you know, what's important for them? Um, and I don't want to, you know, I'll obviously lead them a little bit and I'll oversee it in that regard. But, you know, what is important for them is, you know, you know, um, you know, respect, it's trust, it's teamwork, all those things. But, you know, and I don't want to have like 20 lists. I want it to be really specific about this is what we need to do. If we can do this right, it will help us to be the best team and have the best experience. Because I always say it's not just... You know, winning games is great, but I want them to look back in, in 20 years and just say, man, that was great. Wasn't that, that was one of the best experiences I've ever had. It wasn't always easy, but 
when you can do that, I think that's when you have the most success. So, you know, and that's, you know, it's, it's easy if you have it as a, as a, a team led, you know, culture with the coaches, everyone, the staff, including Jonathan, everybody, we're a part of this big family. And that's, I, I think you see in the background, I actually quite like it. It looks like Jonathan's got it in place there, but you know, everything that's on that wall there, that, that matters. You know, and it's about the fans. It's about the community too. But you know, about us being the most successful team and organization. All right, we're going to try Benaja Laney again. Benaja, hi. Can you hear me, Coach? Yeah. Hey, Benaja. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good. So I just wanted to join in on the action and ask you a quick question. I just wanted to know, um, you know, the, being the, the last time that you played against us, what was it that inspired you about our team? You know, especially like in those, you know, those last seconds and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Look, look, I, um, well, number one, really excited coach you. You know, it's, uh, I remember I tried to get you a few years ago, so it didn't work. So better late than never. But um, no, we're going to go. <laughs> Hey, but look, um, look, I, I think I was watching like you had me nervous going in, to be quite honest, because I had watched the Washington game and it's it's more like, you know, you found that chemistry, you found that fight and that commitment. Um, and it's hard work to be really great. It's a lot of hard work, but you guys just like just did it together. You handled the, the ebbs and flows in the game and you really had us. You know, I had a change with all the switching and the aggressiveness on BG and, and what you were doing on Skyler. It was hard. So, you know, I had Diana out, but, um, you know, I'm very thankful for Sophie Cunningham for making those shots because I had to move to the weak side. So you really had to make me think in that game how I can actually try to get this W. And um, But I, I like the fight that you guys had because that's, that's a lot to build on. And, and you played well together and um, you played with that aggressiveness. And that's what, and that's what you need. And I know that's what we're going to do this year. Thank you. Jackie Powell. Hi again. Uh, so Sandy, I actually have been doing some math this week and I'm not great at math, but I think I got this right. And so here we, um, the percentage of, of women head coaches in the W, what it was two years ago in 2020, it was around 33.3%. And so excluding whatever happens with Phoenix, um, right now, the W is at 58.3% women head coaches. So that, that's a pretty big percent increase. I think it's like 75%. So I'm curious, you know, what that um, means to you and, and symbolically what that means for the WNBA. Yeah, look, um, and Jackie, I mean, it means a lot. You know, I think, um, you know, I think, we're all coaches. It's not, we're not female coaches. We're not male coaches. We're basketball coaches. And, but, you know, especially for the WNBA, it's good to see um, a lot more females getting opportunities because I think there's a lot of great coaches out there. I mean, you know, all around the world. And it's just about getting those opportunities and showing, you know, how good you really are. Um, and so just to see that number, I think the growth, I think that's heading in the right direction. You know, former players getting that opportunity and, you know, I think that's great too. I'm a, I'm a former player, but you know, in um, you know, it, it, organizations have to make the decision what they think is best for them. But I, I do find that encouraging, and I think it's you know, optics. You know, it, it looks good, and and I think it will help us continue to grow our league. Right, right. And Jonathan, I'm curious as to what you make of sort of that change and and what that means for for the league and what this league is is trying to be. Yeah, I think it's incredibly important. Um, what we always try to do here, it's not just about basketball, it's about life. And like, what do these players want to do when they're done playing? And what does that look like? And I think having access to a former player that is now in a leadership role with with the program as the head coach, uh, it's inspiring. And so the players not only inspire us, but I think that Sandy's in a position to inspire them. And they can start asking questions earlier. What does it take? Is this an avenue I want to go down? Um, you know, Jackie Jumos, uh, you know, who's who's since transitioned but she out, but she's trying to figure that out with her life. After playing, you know, did I, do I want to coach? Do I want to go to the corporate world? Do I want to be an agent? And she's getting to experience all that. And I think having the ability to have those conversations earlier and really establish life after basketball is just so important. Um, so I'm really glad to see the league trending this way. And I'm, I'll be interested to see how the hires go uh, going forward. Thank you. Thank you both. Brian Florentin. 
Good afternoon, Sandy, and good afternoon, everyone on the call. Brian Florentin from NetsDaily.com. Um, during her exit interview, Sabrina Ionescu discussed her experience playing point guard for the first time in the W and where she hoped to improve. Now, Sandy, during the uh, during the conference so far, you mentioned playing at a faster pace for the team. Do you have any sort of early plans on how you plan to utilize Benaja and Sabrina in the offense in 2022? Um, look, I think that's still a work in progress, but um, you will know this. They'll be a big part of the offense. I mean, they're, you know, obviously these are, you know, these are your core players on your on your team. But it's it's more about just putting them in their situation. They can have the the most success. They get the most attention, you know. So it, it's putting in them action, and but then having and making sure that not all the pressure is on them because it is a team game. You know, and it's more about moving the ball until we can get a great shot, you know. But they've got so many great skills with their shooting, their playmaking. Um, they're not just scorers. They're more than that. And, you know, so we'll, we'll explore the way that we want to play. And it will, you know, obviously it'll determine what kind of players we can add and, and free agency and how we continue to build the team. I think that matters. But, you know, the, those two players, Tash, I mean, they're, they're really key integral players to us. And, and we want to, you know, I, I want to make sure that I'm putting them in position so they can, you know, have great season and continue to grow. Thank you for answering. I appreciate it. Miles Ehrlich. Hi, do we have Clara on the call still? Yes, I'm here. Hi, I've got a question for you. Um, at Liberty interviews a few months back, uh, at the Liberty exit interviews a few months back, Dee Dee Richards said that her favorite off-court moment as a rookie was the team trip to Napa last summer. As owners, how important has it been for you and Joe to invest, whole, to invest holistically, even outside the sidelines on team camaraderie and chemistry, and how has that synergy extended to partnering the Liberty and the Nets together? That's a several layered question. I would say, of course, I think, and I love that, I love listening, by the way, to Jonathan and Sandy during this hour because we are um, so aligned on so many things, but one of them is definitely building the relationships and the chemistry among the team, which of course has to happen off the board, you know, as well as on. So as many opportunities that we can create for that, we absolutely will. And it also extends back to legends, former players, former incredible stars of the NBA for the past 25 years. So bringing in their perspective and sharing it with the rookies, I mean, all of that is part of um, the whole legacy of the New York Liberty and also of the entire league. So of course, we're, we are going to try to continue to do that. And I think What's been really wonderful is the receptiveness of the players to really develop relationships with each other and also with Joe and myself. And I think um, it's been incredibly rewarding uh, to hear what their hopes and dreams are and to continue to really uh, develop them as women. Uh, as Jonathan was just mentioning, and I, I'm so proud of the EQ and the IQ that we have in both Sandy and Jonathan, and it really comes through today. We just you know, knowing that these women are going to have these lives um, um, after they finish playing and how do we put them in a position to really succeed uh, after they've given everything that they can you know, to the state of basketball is, is really, really important. So from my perspective, I'm very aware of that holistic view. You know, there, you know, everybody wants to win a championship. We want you know, to be piece by piece toward that dream. Right? It's going to be playoff one playoff appearances first and then ultimately that goal of the championship but also it's beyond that as well right we want them to admit that and experience that but also set them up to really succeed uh after they've um, after they've uh, hung up their shoes did i answer did you have another part of that question no that was fantastic thank you very much jeff magliocetti Thank you. Hi, Jeff Magliacetti once again with Windsider, Nets Republic, and Empire Sports Media. Sandy, my next question is for you. You're someone who has seen the Liberty in their heyday as an opponent. Shout out Miami Soul and Detroit Shock and Seattle Storm for that matter too. But, you know, going into this, it's good. New York is a basketball town, first and foremost, it feels like a lot of these cases. You've seen them at the Garden, and you've seen how the team has come out, how fans have come out. So what's the one thing you want this fan base to know about you as a head coach and as a human being 
And how do you think the liberty can get back to those days we saw at those crowded days we saw at the garden from both an encore perspective and, or an off court perspective? How do you plan to connect with this fan base? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I've like I said, I've been in this league for so long and I've had uh, so many experiences and, and this is one of my favourite places to go and play. I think the fans are just so loyal and, and uh, very supportive of the team. And I know, you know, COVID has changed that a little bit. So hopefully we're going back to limited um, restrictions. But, you know, they, the, the, the team sees they come to one game, they're going to enjoy the style that we play and the players that we have because they're very talented. This is some of, you know, this is the best league in the world and we've got some of the best players on our team. Um, as to the engagement or the connection with me, I always say I go back to I am Australian. Um, yeah, my, I'm very easygoing. I'm a country girl. I enjoy those kind of relationships, getting to know each other. And, you know, that's important for us. It, it, it's not just about playing basketball. It's bigger than that. You know, we want that fan engagement because that's important. That's how we grow, our, you know, obviously not just our team, but the whole WNBA, um, you know, getting out in the community. That is important for me. And I think that's part of the vision. It's not just winning championships, but it's about the, you know, obviously getting great people in here and organisation, developing a strong culture and, and, and having a fan base that is going to be really proud of the way that we play. As a quick follow-up to the, to the Australian thing, how great was it to see two of your Australian protégés, Beck Allen, Sammy Whitcomb, post-career high numbers last season? Yeah, look, it, it was great. I, I've really enjoyed uh, coaching them and they're just really high quality people too, but really good basketballers as well. And they're, they're team players and that's what you need. I mean, uh, they're willing to play their role and they play their role well. And, and, and it was great to see them have really good seasons last year. Appreciate your time and insight. Welcome, coach. Yeah, thank you. Last question, Howard Migdahl. Thanks, Sandy. This one's actually for you. I, I'm curious strategically, um, you know, your Mercury teams have been as high as, I think, first or second uh, in pace and other times as low as 11th. Obviously, you talked about scoring more points and pace was a significant part of what this team was doing previously. How do you see that working with the roster that you guys have with the caveat, obviously, that that roster is subject to change? Yeah, Howard, I mean, I think I suppose it's more about like obviously being adaptable. When I evaluated the Liberty, I just thought, you know, they... Uh, the Mercury played at a slow pace, but, you know, we could score a little bit better in the half court. But it's more the players that they have here, I think we can utilise them a little bit better with their athleticism. But that starts on the defensive end. You know, you're a great defensive team. You can get easy baskets in the transition phase as well. Um, and then in the half court, it's, it's just making sure we have a good balance of in and outside attack. I'm not saying post up. In and out means penetration. This is a team that really, it was, I think, 11th or 12th and free throw attempts. You know, we got to have to make sure that we have, we play a style of basketball that we're hard to guard. I mean, great three-point shooting team. I think you saw that. That was fantastic. Um, but, you know, you need that inside presence as well because that will probably create higher percentage out, outside shots too or even, you know, better shots, uh, great shots. So, you know, I'm excited just to see how it all works. You know, that's the plan. That's my intention. I want to play faster. Um, but that doesn't mean turning the ball over. And that's something we've got to make sure protecting the ball. That's critical for us. You know, it's just knowing that, you know, the difference between a good and a great shot, making sure we're getting paint penetration or post penetration out of movement. You know, we're not saying we, you know, we've got mismatches. There's, there's ways that we can play that we can be really, really dynamic and, and entertaining. I mean, that's what I want to get. And players out there, you know, I want to, you know, see them smiling and having fun. Because like I said, it's a game that we love. Appreciate it, Sandy. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Sandy, Jonathan, Clara, everyone for joining us today. We will send the recording of this to everyone shortly. Um, thank you again. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.